Hi, this is Brandon from Tay Talk Tech, back here again with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to connect a VM to your local LAN. This is one thing that VirtualBox makes so easy, um, but when switching to KVM, it's a bit more involved. The bridge will allow the VM to direct access to your local LAN through the host machine. So essentially what the host machine is acting as, a, it's acting as a bridge for the VM to your local network, hence a bridge. Now, I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and you wanna see more content like this, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification. Let's get into it. Now, three points about bridge networking. The first is uh, warning. Uh, this will expose the VM directly to the internet if that is something that you care about. This only works on ethernet interfaces and will require a bridge, so don't try it on Wi-Fi interfaces. And we'll need to run the commands as either root or sudo, so be mindful of that. Now, before moving into the commands, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, give it a dislike if you did not like the video. Lastly, let me know what you liked, didn't like, or any questions you have uh, uh, down in the comments below. So let's go ahead and get into the commands. First, I want to show you the the bridge that's associated with the default network, which is VIRBR0. Now, anytime that you define a network for your VMs, it's going to create a virtual bridge for that different network. Now, um, if you have any questions about networking, please visit my previous video in this series and that will that will explain to you how networking works and how to set all that kind of stuff up. I'm not going to cover that here. Now you can also see it with Versh net info and then we just do default. There we go. Got it right there. All right, so the first task that we're going to need to do when to go ahead and set this up is we're going to have to go ahead and create a bridge. That's a pretty simple task. You're just going to do NMCLI and you're going to do connection. And what we're going to be using is this, you're seeing NMCLI. Now, NMCLI is short for Network Manager Command Line Interface. Network Manager is, it's a, it's an application and a daemon that allows you to manipulate the devices and connections on your Linux system. Now, it's not something I'm going to be covering in detail here. I do plan on covering this in a future in some future videos, so make sure you're subscribed for that. So we're going to go ahead and NMCLI connection, add type bridge. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and put a CON name, and we're going to call it BR0, and you can name it whatever you want. And we're going to do if name BR0. Perfect, we've got the bridge added. Now if you do an IPv, let me see if you do an IP address, you can see it right down there at the bottom. Good stuff, all right? So now what we, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up the IP networking. Now, you have two ways of doing this. You have either DHCP or uh, manual, which is you know setting a static IP address. There's a couple other ones, but we're not going to get into those in this video. So let me just start typing out this command, and I'll show you something. All right. So the connect the command that we're going to be using that you would use to go ahead and determine the determine how you're going to set up the the networking. Or the IP address is you're going to type in NMCLI connection and modify BR0 IPv4 method, and then you've got the different methods. Now there's auto, which is DHCP, and then there's manual, which is the manual method. Now we're gonna I'm gonna be showing you the manual one here, but if you wanted to set it up just as DHCP, you would just set it up as auto. And you know what? We'll just go ahead and do it just for just for demonstration purposes. You can set it up as auto, and that's gonna go ahead and that's gonna go ahead and once the interface is active, it's going to go ahead and reach out through DHCP to, and it's going to get its IP address that way. But that's not what we want to do, but we're going to, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and set a IP address on there. So we're going to do the same command. We're going to do a similar command dot addresses. All right, it's going to be, but we're going to, instead of having IPv4 method auto, we're going to do IPv4 dot addresses. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the IP address that we want to assign. Dot one dot one nine six. All right, and we're gonna also put in the network mass and and slash notation. There we go. Now we need to go ahead and set the method again. Now when you're setting when you're setting up a IP address naturally, I'm sorry, manually, you do have to go back and you have to set the method after you've set the IP address, or else it'll throw an error. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. 
All right, now we've got the IP address set on there. And it's not showing because it's not up, but we'll, we'll go ahead and go back to that. All right, and we're gonna do, and now the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up a gateway, a default gateway. And then we also need to go ahead and set up a DNS server. So to set up a gateway, you're just gonna get rid of addresses and you're just gonna put in gateway. All right, perfect. And then we're gonna do set up a DNS. We're gonna take out gateway and we're gonna put in DNS. All right, if you need to add any additional D, um, IP, um, IP addresses for DNS servers, you would just put a plus sign at the beginning of this and then add those additional. And you can add them on the same line. And all these commands that I'm showing you right now, you can actually combine them all into a single command. I just like doing them in individual commands just because for me, it helps make sure that I'm conscious about what it is that I'm doing. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, perfect. We've got our DNS set as well. All right, so perfect. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up a bridge slave connection. All right, now let's go ahead and do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do nmcli connection, add a type, and we're gonna do bridge tax slave. All right, and we're gonna do connection name, and we're gonna call this, e, we're gonna call this ENP, uh, BR0, and then we got to do an interface name, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our, we're going to do I, IF name, that's going to be the interface name of the Ethernet interface, which is going to be your wired connection, and if you need to get that, you can get that with IP, uh, IP address, and then the next thing that we need to do is we need to set a master, which is going to be BR0. All right, perfect. So again, that's uh, NMCLI connection add, type, bridge, tax slave, uh, contact name, ENP, we're, this is the name that I'm giving, ENP, uh, TAC BR0, and then we got to set the interface that's going to be associated with it in, in the IF name command, and then we got to set the master, which is going to be BR0, which is your bridge. Perfect. Now we've got that here. Now if you want to see these, if you go to IP address, right, you can see the bridge here, but you don't see that other con that slave bridge connection. Now that's that's that is that's completely normal, because this right here is showing actual uh, like networking um, networking devices that can connect out in some way, shape, or form, whether they be virtual or physical uh, interfaces. Now, if you want to see the the connections, is you can actually see them right here. We've got BR zero. And this is going to be associated with uh, the bridge, BR0 right here. All right. And then we've got our ENP. And then that one's going to be associated with, it doesn't have the association yet. So we've got to go ahead. Let's go ahead and get these things started. So let's do NMCLI connection up, ENP, BR0. All right, perfect. Now it did that. Now we got to go ahead and here and do the same thing for the bridge. Perfect. And then you got to give it just a second to go ahead and get up because it will have to go ahead and take down the Ethernet interface and then go ahead and associate that with. Oops. If you run NMCL, NMCLI without it, it'll give you detailed information about the connections, but that's not what we want here. So let's go ahead and just rerun the command. And we can see them there. See, and you can see here, previously, wired connection had the had the Ethernet interface associated with it. Now, the Ethernet interface is being associated with this one right here. Now, let's just make sure that our interface is working. This is just going to test the interface. Perfect. All right, so it's actually pinging it through the bridge. All right, so let's go ahead and test and make sure that the bridge is it is indeed working properly. Now the way you can test that is with ping tack, capital I and then select your interface, which is going to be BR0, because it's going you want to run it through BR0, so and make sure that it's going through there and we'll do 8.8.8.8. .8 Perfect. So everything is running and now we can see there's an IP address here, 192.168.1.196. That's the IP address that we set manually. And if we do an IP address. 
All right, we go down here to our BR0 interface and we can actually see that, that IP address and network mask right there. Cool stuff, right? All right, now, now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and add a V, we're gonna go ahead and add the v, uh, VM to a bridge. Now, if you were if you were installing this from, you know, from the command line, you could just add in uh, tac tac network then bridge and then equals the bridge name and that will go ahead and set it up to that bridge. Now we're going to, since we already have a virtual machine created, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that by editing the XML file. So then what we're going to do is we're going to do versh, oops, all right, let's run versh edit and then we're going to go ahead and put in peppermint. All right, and then we're going to do a forward slash. We're going to do interface. All right, perfect. And then see this, you're going to go down to source bridge, which is right here. And then you're going to go ahead and go in there and change that to BR0. All right, and then we're going to go out of here. Perfect. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to do verse start. All right, we're going to go ahead and start Peppermint, and we're going to give it a second here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get into it with the Versh console. I think I have it on this one. If not, then I'll just go ahead and do it a different way. Perfect, and we can see there that we are in Peppermint. So let's go ahead and just run a IP address. And then we may need to give it just a minute to go ahead and get itself situated. There we go. And you see that right here? We've got our IP address 192.168.1.180. All right, so perfect. Yeah, and see, and keep it. And remember, the IP address that was there before. Let me see if I can scroll up far enough. Yeah, is was 192.168.122.1 for that for this bridge. So we can see that clearly. This is on our local network. And any time that this this machine pings anything, it's going to ping it directly from this IP address. All right, perfect. Well. That covers connecting a VM directly to your local LAN. So I thank you very much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.